now we're going to get into Caitlin Clark, who was selected number one overall in the WNBA draft. She went to the Indiana Fever, right? That's that's where mm-hmm. she was drafted. Mm-hmm. So what is it something? I think it's something crazy like 80% of the Fever games are going to be on national TV. WNBA is smart. I do the same thing. You better put her games on national TV. Yep. Um, you better not do nothing other than that because she is going to resuscitate your sport. Um yes. Lord willing, but uh, we still have to deal with this ongoing dialogue of the pay disparity between WNBA players and NBA players. So we still got this going on now. A couple weeks ago, or was that last week? I think it was two weeks ago. We we talked about Caitlin Clark mm-hmm. potentially playing in the Big Three because Ice Cube offered her five million dollars to play in the Big Three. Clearly, she's declined. She's going the WNBA route. And it keeps this conversation about the pay gap going between NBA players and WNBA players. And we talked about how the starting salary for the WNBA number one overall pick is like 94,000 or, or something like that. 76. Something that 70. Okay. It's something like that. And so, so, you know, some people got to talking about how there's such a huge disparity between that and what the number one overall pick in the NBA garners. So this article here says nothing to fix is called capitalism. WNBA fans left in shock as Caitlin Clark's rookie salary is only 0.6% of Victor Wimbenyama's $12 million deal. It was a surreal moment for Caitlin Clark during the 2024 WNBA draft on Monday night as she was selected first overall by the Indiana Fever. Increased, interestingly, Ex-user Highland Cattle News posted that Clark is estimated to make $76,000 as a rookie, which is 0.6% of San Antonio Spurs rookie Victor Wimbenyama's $12 million earnings in his first year. So there you see there, Caitlin Clark will make 76 k as a rookie. Wimby just made $12 million as a rookie. Need to fix this shit. The gap gonna be that, the gap cannot be that large. When it comes to Caitlin Clark's contract with the Indiana Fever, she is signed to a four-year, $333,056 deal with a $97,000 player option. So that's where I got the $96,000 number from hmm. uh, by 2027. So if she opts in, she can ex- um, she can uh, earn that additional $97,000 on top of the $333,000 base salary. This news garnered the attention of several fans especially when compared to Wimbenyama's four-year $55 million contract with the Spurs. Many shared their strong reactions to the post about Caitlin Clark on X. There's nothing to fix. It's called capitalism. If WNBA numbers improve, the players will get paid. No one watched it currently. Name five teams without Googling. A fan posted. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, So here we got uh, uh, more people who are trying to, you know, um, you know, put facts into the equation here the WNBA generates between I mean the NBA generates between six and seven billion in in revenue yearly WNBA 100 to 200 million hopefully with Clark coming in it'll bring in more revenue but you can't expect them to pay players millions of dollars a year when they don't even make that Meanwhile, ex-user Alejandro Leva commented on the Caitlin Clark predicament by arguing that the root of the issue stems from supply and demand, which continues to hamper the WNBA. WNBA can't pay what it doesn't produce. There isn't a pay gap here. It essentially comes down to supply and demand. The sport may be growing, which is amazing for women and fans, but it will definitely take at least another decade for the WNBA to reach a quarter of what the NBA brings in revenue. Additionally, user the real white Jake talked about the shared revenue process between the NBA and WNBA while pointing out that Caitlin Clark has enough star power to propel the league's ratings. It's just simple economics. The WNBA shares revenue with the W the NBA shares revenue with the WNBA just to keep the league afloat. I'm certain Clark will make significantly more money through endorsements. She may have a large enough impact to help the WNBA raise their average pay scale going forward. The fan posted. So that's pretty much the gist of it. So here, you know, here we go again, more continuing ongoing conversation about the pay gap between WNBA and NBA players. You got a lot of these supporters of the WNBA and a lot of players in the WNBA who somehow think they should be paid 
in a manner that is commensurate with the, with NBA players. But we have more of this kind of talk going on with Caitlin Clark being at the center of it, where we seem to continue to be mystified that the gap is as large as it is. So, uh, I mean, what what do you make of this? Do you think people just need to get over it and pay attention to the facts or – or 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 is there a fix that needs to take place with this pay gap stuff? I think I think what this is mainly about is the people that weren't fans of women's basketball period until they started following her. And so there's a lot of people that knew that there was a pay gap, but you know, whoop de whoop, you know, they're still getting a couple million a year. So who cares? Then you know that's probably what the layman's probably thinking. And then because I was shocked, you know, a couple of weeks ago when you said for the rookie salary, because when I looked it up, I just looked up max. But then um, which was like two hundred something thousand. But then when he was like, hey, man, first round pick gets seventy six. First and, overall. Yeah. First, so the, the yeah, first, first overall first rounders, the first rounders make less than that. That's the number one overall pick. Yeah. So yeah. the number one overall is seventy six. You know, my mind was blown then. And, you know, and then it got my wheels to thinking, you know, spending like. Damn, they, they is. <laughs> I will be complaining too. Like, give me a raise, y'all. The NBA. <laughs> so, hey man, when I was when I was at Walmart, man, I'm like, hey, bro, you know, uh, shoot, give me a raise, y'all. Walmart, you know what I'm saying? Oh well, this quarter it's like, bro, y'all Walmart. Bro. I don't care what happened this quarter. Pay me more. And then when they do want to pay me, they give me twenty five cent. So it was like, come on, bro. It was, it was an insult. I think they're in that position where they're like, yo, we're y'all, we got all of this stuff going on and we get paid like regular people. And I think that's the part where, you know, they got to get over that. <laughs> they go have to get over that. But that's where the sting comes from. Like, come on, bro. We out here doing stuff, bro. Like, come on, 76. And I, I know that there's women out there running around making 50K a year, you know. But again, if people want to think back and look, you know, I heard that, you know, back in the ABA days and early NBA days, players had to have second jobs. Mm -hmm. They weren't getting paid enough. And so uh, the NBA had to work for some years to actually get into this area, which they're currently fumbling, as we discussed earlier. All right. Because uh, but they had to get into that space, which is understandable. So that even that uh, tweet that said, hey, man, you know, it's going to realistically take them about 10 years of positive, uh, yeah. uh, positive uh, moving that's going to get them to actually be paying these people. And so this is my thing and uh, with the Caitlin thing is that to just lean into this uh, extremely. And uh, honestly, you know, cause it's already at nauseum already. Uh, but the NCAA was doing, was in that, uh, you know, was benefiting from that. So uh, I'm pretty sure it's going to also continue. Um, I don't think, I don't think media wants to drop this either. Uh, they enjoy the engagements as well. So there's going to be a symbiotic relationship that happens here. And I would like to see players get paid more. I do. I, I want to see those, those sisters get paid. My, now, this is my last thing I'll say. Um, what the women need to do, though, is embrace her. Because one thing I don't like is all the shade. And um, you, anybody can put on whatever type of hat on this young lady. The fact is, she's a baller. And if you feel like she ain't one when she gets to the league, bust her ass. Show us why you should be the highest paid WNBA player. Because right now, this woman should be the highest paid. And no, and no, nobody wants to be happy about that. Oh, oh, so you saying she's better than No, I'm not saying she's better than her. I'm saying she's more of a superstar. She's more marketable. Oh, why? Because she's, hey, listen, man, we're not going to go down those roads. <laughs> the fact <laughs> is that that's what this is. And if you don't like that, bust ass on a court so everybody can see it and we know your name now. So just take advantage of all the cameras you guys are finally going to get now and try to get your own endorsements and try to find your own way out this because clearly the league is at least a decade away from paying y'all the way y'all want to. And if you are already a person that's been in the league five, six years, you can kiss that goodbye. So try your best while all the eyes on you to get your endorsements, get your bag up and stop crying and pulling people down. So what are your thoughts, sir, on Miss Caitlin Clark getting only 76 racks this year, being a number one overall pick? Um, the difference between your Walmart analogy and the WNBA is that Walmart was never funded by another retailer to keep the lights on. Walmart, Wal at no point in Walmart's history were, was it a subsidiary of a larger company to where it was actually a burden 
to continue to run Walmart uh, from the company who was funding it, but it kept doing it under the hope that one day it will become sustainable on its own. Uh, that's never been a part of Walmart's history. Um, additionally, Walmart uh, in 2023 earned $648.125 billion. <laughs> so, it, <laughs> so if someone says y'all need to pay me more and they work at Walmart, I kind of get it. Uh, I kind of get it. The WNBA is not in that same predicament. Um, a quick comparison between the NBA and the WNBA. Revenue, NBA, $10 billion. WNBA, $60 million. Uh, Average salaries, NBA, $9.6 million. WNBA, $102,751. Ticket price, NBA, $94. WNBA, $47. Highest paid player, Steph Curry, $48 million. Highest paid WNBA player apparently is someone named Jewel Lloyd, $228,094. Average viewership, 2022 NBA Finals, 12.4 million. 2022 WNBA the entire year, 412,000. Average attendance, NBA, 17,184. WNBA, 5,679. Ratings, 2022 NBA Finals, 7.6, reaching 12.4 million people. WNBA highest rated game was the Aces versus the Storm, which had 852,000 viewers. So that's 12.4 million to 852,000, peaking at 1.1 million, which is compared to the NBA's 7.6 million, which is laughable. Uh, I mean, not, not 7.6, compared again to the NBA's 12.4 million. So listen, people, however you want to slice this thing, the economics are the economics. So your best hope is that the NBA is able to capitalize off of Caitlin Clark so that it can become a greater revenue generator. That's the only thing that's going to change this. And the tweet that talked about how long that can take is 100% on the money. It's going to take a while before you even see the fruits of that labor. Because first, you need to get the viewers to go up. You need the tickets to go up, which creates the demand, which can therefore create an increase in ticket prices. And then you can create an increase in capacity at games, because like I said, the games really don't the arenas don't be full at WNBA games. It's like the lower section and maybe a little bit of the lowest part of that top section and the rest of it is empty. OK, so then once you get that to happen, then you can get larger deals with corporate sponsors to get the corporate dollars, which increases the, the, the value of TV rights and TV contracts and media deals. That's how you get the league to become a greater revenue generator. But before players can actually before that actually matriculates down to the players themselves, it's going to take several years. So this is a process before you can even see the fruits of that labor. And hopefully Caitlin Clark can be a catalyst to that. But the, 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 the top of the article talking about capitalism, that's absolutely right. Who do you want to blame for that? Whose fault is that? Be more interested in the WNBA. <laughs> I don't know. And that's my thing. Like the crux of my argument a couple of weeks ago when we talked about the big three thing was intrinsically, how do you make people want to like the WNBA more? How do you do that? Maybe it takes Caitlin Clark, maybe it'll make, I don't know. I don't have a crystal ball. Maybe what it takes is Caitlin Clark. Maybe that will be the ultimate, you know, catalyst. Maybe that's what will do it. Maybe Caitlin Clark will get more people to care. But you, what you need to address is the, is the greater, more existential question. How can we get people to care more? Because before you can create the higher ticket prices, before you can create the greater capacity, before you can create the demand, you have to get people to care more, to want it more. How do you fix that? Target women? Women watch more NBA, college football, NBA, and probably like Major League Baseball and hockey than WNBA. And they're women. Women who like sports follow other sports before they follow the WNBA. Throw tennis in there too. I would like to see the ratings for Wimbledon when Serena Williams was in the finals compared to a WNBA finals game. 
I'd be curious to know what those ratings look like. I kind of feel like the Wimbledon final rated higher. So women are supposed to be love. Women are supposed to be supporting women and women in sports, right? How do you get more women to like the WNBA? Because right now the numbers don't reflect women following the WNBA enough. How do you get more people to care about it? That'll fix it. It's going to take a and, and even after you saw that Rub Rubik's Cube, it's still going to take a while. It's still going to take a while. That's how economics work. It takes a long for those things to trickle down before you actually start to feel the effects. So it is basic economics. It is basic supply and demand. It is basic capitalism. It's not even that complicated. I just read those numbers off to you. I'm not making that stuff up. So that's what that's what the WNBA is going to have to address. And I would have thought that people like Maya Moore and Deanna Tarazi and go on down the list, Cheryl Swoops, Brianna Stewart, and who are these other people, Asia Wilson and Kelsey Plum and going all the way back to people like Becky Hammond, Rebecca Lobo. Did I say Lisa Leslie already? Like, I know these names because I follow sports. But how many women... And people in general who follow sports who don't even know that stuff, who, who couldn't rattle those names off. And these were superstars. Brianna Stewart won four. Did you know Brianna Stewart won four straight national championships? Was that what team was that with? With UConn. Okay, okay. Yeah. When, when, when Brianna Stewart was at UConn, she won four straight national championships. She was, the, she was the best player and the biggest star in college basketball. Goes into the WNBA, and she's just another great player who doesn't move the needle. Well, and that's another thing. But that's the thing about college, women's college basketball I couldn't get with because there was no competition. It was either a UConn run, a Tennessee run, and right now it's a South Carolina run. What's their record mm -hmm. in the last three years? Like something stupid. They only lost like three games. They're like a hundred and something and three. And I'm like, yeah. that's like the super stackness of what goes on in women's basketball is also what makes it unappealing at times, especially in the yeah. college realm. But yeah. but no, I, I hear you, bro. I, I just think that with the the competition what she's going to do is she's they're going to have the highest ratings they've ever had ever in the WNBA this season this first game is going to outdo some finals games that come out this year so um people will be watching her and I'm going to be watching to see who mad at her and <laughs> yeah and who's going to try to steal the ball try to bust her ass I want to see who's out here hooping because guess what you know what I'm saying? Y'all was probably hooping for real, but y'all going to have an extra umph now that she on the court. Y'all should have been mm -hmm. playing like that in the first place. Yeah. But the and, thing is, maybe they were. Maybe they were. Because no, 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 no one knows because no one knows. I'm not saying they were. I'm just saying we don't I know don't, that because the, none of, who's watching to know? Well, this is this is my thing. So if she – this is this is my thing. It's, there's, it's clearly within them. So they've done it before. And this is my problem with just NBA players too consistently be awesome and the thing the thing is what what kobe and what jordan were able to do was to hit this level in their practice to where they were able to sustain a level of awesome that people would just only tap into so if these if these women out here really oh yeah because i know they, they got smoke for her they, I, I know it's a lot of them that don't like this, this is black white everybody in between yeah. you understand know because uh, she's she's walking around here parading as hetero. That's not cool either in that world. Like she's just like not cool. And so they're going to try to bully her and all this other type of stuff. And it's like, all right, keep it basketball. But if you're out here really hooping and you feel like you better than Caitlyn, it's all because of X, Y, Z, we'll prove it. And show us that y'all really hoopers like that. And this is all hype. Please show me. And then show the world. So at this point, it was like, oh, yeah, y'all really out here hooping. But if you only turned up like, like that for Caitlin, and then I come out here and watching you airballing layups again, yeah, we're going to start turning it off again. So um, so that hate, that hate that got you in your heart that's going to make you show out against Caitlin, uh, you need to play with that fire and passion every night. Maybe people will start watching. So, um, but yeah, man, I'll, I'll be interested to watch. I'll be watching these games, bro. I'll put a little parlay action on it too, man. <laughs> I'll pick the under on everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I think all the unders. Give it to yeah. me. Yeah. Yeah. I, I hear all of that. Uh maybe maybe she is the catalyst. Maybe maybe she'll be the catalyst. I've seen a few, like I watched a few WNBA because I, I hear what you're saying about that com competition thing. Mm -hmm. Because I would I would sit down with my mom from time to time because I'd say she watches it. And I would watch some of these games, particularly in the playoffs. And 
the WNBA, like the Aces had no competition. They just steamrolled everybody. Yeah. It was a foregone conclusion that they were going to win the whole thing. Yeah. But even within me watching some of those games, it got a little spicy. Like them, 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 them women was out there, you know, you know, almost getting into fights. You know what I'm saying? Getting real aggressive. You know, it, it got spicy at times. So my thing is, it's there. The element is there. It's just there's still some ingredient that's missing that makes people not want to care enough about it. And 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 maybe Caitlin Clark can be that missing ingredient that gets more people to care because I'm inclined to agree she is going to draw a lot of eyeballs. So oh, yeah. maybe she can exacerbate what is already kind of there latent and then maybe she can bring these galvanize enough of that, you know, sort of that that intrinsic caring of the sport so that it can continue to move forward because thus far there's no economics to suggest that anybody should be paid in that league more than they already are it's a subsidized league and it remains a subsidized league yeah i mean i, I agree bro it's it's crazy bro it's it's a wild dynamic that well hey man i was professional when i was at walmart so <laughs> hey, bro! I'm about to say, well, they're professionals. And they're, nah, man, hey, man, I was professional too, man. Nah, Getting man. underpaid yeah. and overworked. Listen, and I'm not, a, and, uh, and they're not playing 82 games either. So we gotta evaluate yeah. all that stuff too, man. Like these dudes out here playing 82 games. That's yeah. Crazy. How much more you want them to make? But uh, yeah, I, I'm a professional marketer, and I and trust me, ladies <laughs> and gentlemen, I am overpaid. I am overworked and underpaid. Trust yeah, me. Exactly. So, just because you a pro don't mean nothing. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but be a pro and like and subscribe over here. <laughs> we out there balling. Every Tuesday, man. What you doing? <laughs> Shouts out to Caitlin Clark. Yeah. Yeah, get the bag, sister. Get we going we going di- we going one of these days we going to dive into that little comment that you made about how it's not cool that she's hetero. <laughs> <laughs> hey, bro, I like how you, you, glossed over, you glossed over that, but there's a lot to unpack there. <laughs> hey, man, I heard things, bro. It's crazy. Yeah. Oh, I got plenty of stories on that one, but you know, <laughs> the topic for another video. <laughs> uh.